there, welcome back. Uh, today I'm talking about Shinya Sakamoto's wonderful film, Gemini. Which the film was very hard to hold off. This, until this release in the UK, it was impossible. And uh, people who were fans of Sakamoto was wondering when's Gemini ever going to get released. And uh, it just took forever. And it was so obscure that because I didn't know all the Sakamoto films, I'd never even heard of it. That was how... I mean, I'd very heard of some of his Sigmund films, like Sneaker June and Tetsuo and stuff like that, Tokyo Fest, but even I hadn't even heard of this film until I started into Sigmundo. That's how kind of obscure it was over here. And I'm sure some people who are into Japanese films are cringe in that comment, but it's the truth. I didn't know it existed at all. Who's from Touch of Film told me about it. <laughs> so that's how uh, obscure it was to me. So, um, and that's a real shame because this is one of, that's another one of the, um, Sukimoto masterpieces. This is up there for me with Kotoko, Vital, Killing, Fires on the Plane, that kind of thing where all of his talents just come together beautifully for one film. Everything, everything just clicking perfectly and everything makes sense and it, it feels thematically as one as whole. Now, this um, is just out. I mean, as I record, I record this on the day of its release. Because I pre-ordered it, I got it a bit earlier. But you, but you do get some extras, more extras, like the makings of. You also get a new commentary with Tom Mess, which I haven't seen in anything. I've just seen the film so far. But you also get this very nice box, you know, and you get a more normal cover. Some more third bundle films, who do a lot of really good Asian films. So, I would definitely recommend this box set. Top up. It's a new release. It's eighteen pounds at the moment, but you put maybe we get a seal later on. But it is really worth it for eighteen pounds. It's worth it for buying the full price because the print's wonderful. The print looks gorgeous. The film is amazing. It's one of those films definitely worth full price. So the film itself is a. Uh, it's it's one of those ones that's hard to describe because it doesn't reveal itself at all. It really wants to. It's a bit that it starts off with atmosphere and a set up of this doctor comes back from the war. He was a hero to everybody. He was a guy. He was a guy who'd saved lots of lives. He got lots of medals. Everyone thinks he is the bees and knees. They think he's a genius. I'd be a doctor. People come to see him to to be helped by him for the simplest of things, just so they can meet him and have an excuse to meet him because he's such a great reputation. He's moved back to where his family is and he's in with his parents again but he's got his wife with him because they found this woman who has amnesia. Yeah, obviously that's going to be... Uh, that's not going to be developed here. <laughs> obviously there's nothing suspect there. And she has amnesia, her house buttoned down apparently and he found her by the lake. He doesn't tell his parents how he found her because he found her naked by the lake. And he's just intrigued by her. He's just fascinated by her. There's something about her that really gets under his skin and makes him fascinated by her. Even though he is this civilised doctor, coming from this very civilised family. His family is very old-fashioned. They've got their own ideas. But they've got money, so they've been isolated from the world. But they've, they've got their... The father was a doctor. They are so entrenched in their class system where there's maids, where there's assistants, nurses, and they're the king of the castle, basically. They, they don't have to change with the times. The times have to come to them and adapt to their way of life. So he knows that, he understands that, so basically, but he's taken over the practice, and he's like, um, even though he doesn't quite agree with everything his parents say and do, and he knows what's around him, he's a good son. He's trying to be the best son he can be. And he has fallen in love with his wife. And his parents are looking at her a bit weird. They're trying their best to be welcoming. But the amnesia thing strikes them as a bit odd as well. It's like, where does she really come from? Because they're such a proud family, they are suspect because they don't want their family like corrupted, <laughs> obviously. And now, um, into this, we have... An atmosphere of dread, like there's a, there's a weird smell in the house. They have to clean the house down to get rid of, and then at a certain point, 
the father dies, mysterious circumstances, he just dies. It's like he's in a shock and he's dead. And it's so obscure. I had to I, I rewind it to see what the hell happened there. That's weird. And then um, his mother, then a, a dear truly, the mother dies of a heart attack, which everyone sees, sees as it's just a reaction to the death of the father. It's just she couldn't live without him. But we see her being shot because she sees someone around the house and she sees a, a birthmark on his leg and gives her a heart attack and she collapses. And then other mysterious things happen. Now, um, I'm going to finish the non spoiler part of the review now. <laughs> There's only so much I can talk about here without spoiling it. It's about the story, and the story is really complicated, and it's wonderful. And it's it's all about um, the actual story is about um, the light sign, dark side of your nature, what you repress, what you stupidly repress, what you what you place your hopes on, what you place your identity on, and how these things are malleable as time goes by and how these things can be adapted and how you've been pretty much forced into a way of seeing the world that might not be the world, it's just the way you've been taught to see the world and it's all about how your identity is developed by partially you but partially your experiences of the world and your surrounding your family and what they want from you and what they insist the world is and how you try and repress the darker side of your nature and the darker side of your family and to have a nice polite veneer, you know, to keep the society running, to keep everyone in their place, either they're rich, they're rich, they're poor, they're just the scummy poor. It's all about this idea where everyone's got a place. It's a society that relies on the placement of people. Like, you're this, you're that, that's it, that's it. We don't need to talk anymore. We'll just have our own little... Habit, weird habits, we'll, we'll be weird in a weird, weird way, but as long as we're respectable, everything's fine. We don't have to worry that much about the other people, we don't have to look at the other people and see who they are. And it's it's all about repression of the complexity of reality and how people can just create caricatures of other people just to make themselves feel safe. And how basically, no matter who you are, you will see someone as you need to see them rather than who they actually are as a complex being. So that's what the film's about, but now we're going to spoilers. So if you haven't seen the film, go see it. Just go see it, it's brilliant. If you have seen the film, you can go beyond this point. Right, um, so the spoiler is... Um, the, the Doctor has a twin brother who, after the death of the parents, knocks him out puts him down a well and covers a well and just opens up his home to feed him. This identical twin is the same in every way apart from this one birthmark that, as we find out, was the thing that got him thrown at the family as a child. The, 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 the parents actually put him in the water to drown in the water because they couldn't take the shame of this birthmark. But he floated down and was found by uh, the poor and the poor, the poor people took care of him. And he developed into an artist and became a entertainer. And he met the woman who would later claim to have, been, have amnesia and become, you know, get married to the doctor. So she went from being the, from being the poor to being the rich. He, on the other hand, was just a petty criminal, petty entertainer. His life was defined by people who took him in but were hand to mouth, had to survive, the, the society around them demanded that they have to become criminals to actually survive because it does not provide for them in any meaningful way. It would rather demonise them rather than actually try and help them. Which is the big point of the film is these people are not treated as humans. So at a certain point when he realises, and as the film progresses you start to see it from different people's point of view, you see it from the first thought from the doctor's point of view, then you start to see the, the twin brother telling the story of the of his wife and telling her how, what, where, where it came from her, what happened with her, what happened with him. And then you see from the wife's point of view and she explains, as she works out that the twin, 
she works she works it out that basically the the the, the doctor has been replaced because she knows he's a different person. Like no matter how similar the face is, and how much he tries to mimic him, there's a desire for her that the doctor couldn't physically do. Like the doctor was so repressed, he couldn't actually make love to his wife in a meaningful way. It was just an in and out type of thing. <laughs> You know, he was repressed because of society. And um, the, other, the other twin was was almost hungry around her. He was just so into her. And instantly clicked to her that this was who it was. And he will not admit it. He's actually going to become the doctor. He's going to become... He will throw anything away to get his birthright. No matter what the circumstances... What the consequences, he will get what he is owed... And she will even like uh, talk. He will even uh, mentally torture his loved one just to get it. So you switch between all these different personalities, and you start to see how the actual wife. She thought they, cause they, her lover, the 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 criminal twin was thrown out of the society for criminality. She thought he left. He wasn't coming back, and she was lost when she saw her. His his uh, his identical twin, who she originally thought. Was him coming back, but, but with different clothes? It turns out it wasn't. So she thought he was gone for good. He was never coming back, and that's why she took up with the doctor and made up the story just to get a new life and get away from the hell of her existence, of her hand of existence. You know, so she, she she presents herself as what she wants to be, which is this demure person who has all the the right attributes to actually. Be a member of the main society, and she can pull it off. I mean, everyone, no one doubts she knows what she's doing. So, it shows the fragility of all this world of set up, all this need for pretension. Really, she her, her existence destroys all that, and it destroys and it basically creates a need for revenge on that family by the twin who was thrown away. So I think nothing's simplistic. Like he wants revenge on the family because he sees her with them, but he also wants revenge on the family just for revenge on the family, but without her. But it's all complicated. And it's all lots of weird needs to it. And it's almost like he's trying to become the person they threw out, and he doesn't even know it. Like he's he would say that he's he's just getting his place, but there is a kind of need there to actually be the person that they that he thought he should have been, but it wasn't. Which means he falls into a lot of the patterns that the, 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 the original Doctor fell into as well. And there's a weird psychology of um, the twin and how everything kind of interacts. And also as the, uh, the, the other twin is actually in the ground, in the well, he becomes much more animalistic. And he becomes much... He starts off as very proud and very brutal towards the people who this to him. But after time, after he actually finds a way to escape and get revenge of the twin, he starts to realise his own flaws. His own flaws were his pride, his, his need to tie himself into his old family roots. When in fact they were um, hypocrites. So there was, so he, he deals with the complexity of the situation in a way that his twin, who tried to take over his life, really couldn't. His twin tried to place him to be him. But the doctor actually learns from his mistakes. He learns to forgive himself for his errors of judgment. Like he he kind of sees the the poor scum. But after the problem, after his problems, he starts to realise they're just humans. You know, he will go and help them now. He will try and make a bridge between him and them, so it's not just a a wall between them. Like he does understand he made mistakes and he was a. He was a problem. Like some of he had a problem which he would not admit to. That everyone said he was nice. And he was nice, but he had one block that came from his family that he needed to push through, and he actually succeeds. So this is one of the weird Sakamoto films that it's not like a an amazing happy ending. I mean, there's still a sense of um, damage done. Like he does, he does take up with his wife, even though he knows a past, and they do have a family, but he does look damaged by it. 
I mean, he does look damaged. The fact that his parents weren't what they thought they was. He had a brother who was turned crazy by his circumstances, and basically, his place in the world is very was very fragile. So it's not a happy ending, but it is an ending that was a bit more hopeful than some of the other endings had from Sakamoto. It is a wonderful film. It's just so good. It just it's one of those ones. It's like. This sounds a very theatrical story, but the way it's proje- projected onto the screen, the way it's acted, and the way that Sakamoto sets every, not, every revelation up, he gives each moment a time to land and a time to let the characters feel the revelation before he moves on to the next one, then to the next one, so that you always feel that the revelation is part of the storytelling, it's not just part of the plot unfolding. It's like you get one revelation, you get to see how that affects the characters, then you see another revelation, how it affects the characters. Like, the idea of this, this guy who's replaced his brother, one of the big things is the fact that his um, ex-lover has worked it out, and he will not admit it. And that's a major dramatic thread that could have been passed over in our inferior film, but in this one it becomes a crux of the film. And the thing is, this film's only 90, it's less than 90 minutes long, it's like 85 minutes long, and it's it feels like it's all it's paced really well, but you always have this feeling it's always like pushing forward like an animal. <laughs> it's, there's a sense of there's something primal about it below the surface of the plight manners. There's always something there that's always pushing forward, which gives us great drive. But it's always like, enough patience to let everything sit and let all the revelations sit, let all the traumatic experiences sit with the characters, so you understand the characters. So yeah, Gemini is wonderful. Gemini is just so good. So I'd highly recommend seeing it. If you haven't seen it, buy it. It's just amazing. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. And I'll be back soon with some more.